First of all, can I say you're doing absolutely awesome having to sit, sit through most of this, this day. And I know there's been really good speakers and some really important stuff, but still sitting and listening, you have done extremely well. I've only had to tackle two people who try to leave early, <laughs> which was really cool. They had to pay twice before they left. Um, just very, very quickly, team, there was a um, marriage seminar in heaven. And the facilitator said, all you men who led your families correctly, who protected your wives, who looked after your kids, who paid the bills, did all the hard yards and led your families correctly, come and stand on my right. And all you men who let the woman lead, who didn't really do what you're meant to do, come stand on the left. And in seconds, there was this long line on the left, just one Samoan guy standing on the right. <laughs> the facilitator said to the Samoan man, so tell us your secret. How was it that you were able to lead and lead well? And the Samoan man looked up and said, my wife said, go stand there and don't move. <laughs> Team, just very briefly, because we've got about eight minutes left. I want to introduce you to a particular fellow who both of us, we loved the same woman and had feelings for the same woman nearly 30 years ago. I ended up marrying her. It really didn't matter too much. He didn't care because that woman was his sister. I've asked Ron to come up and take four or five minutes just to fire up our Pacific because that's what Pacific Wave is all about. And I'll come back after Ronnie and explain to you where to from here. Are we good, team? Stand by. Thanks, Nikki. That's the thing about it that with your older sister, there is a concept or a value that's in our, particularly in our Samoan, and it's called the whenganga, which means that whatever your sister says, whatever she says you've got to do, or your brother looks after her, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful concept that we have in our, in our culture. So, of course, when your sister's husband asks you to come and speak, and about five minutes ago, you've got to get up and do it. So that's a, a hint, so I'm here. But what's also one of our, our values has been whakapa'apa, which is, or, or fa'alo'alo, which is respect. Um, alofa, love. Um, loto ma'olalo, or loto to, humility is really important as well. And so when I think about it, there's a couple of things, and especially in light of our, um, of our, of our conference today, and especially with invited with Pacific Wave that is happening, there were two stories that I remember, especially as a young Pacific person growing up. My father was a scholarship student here in New Zealand years ago, so he had this vision when he returned back to Samoa that he would bring his family, like many of our families that come from the Pacific, that to give their children a better chance and an opportunity that education was going to be it. And so I remember as a seven-year-old, when we came from Samoa, we were living in Oway Raka at the time, there was a buzz in the house. And as a seven-year-old, there was my father got my brother, the young brother and I sitting down and watching this game of rugby. Now it was 1975, if you remember this game, the All Blacks were playing Scotland at a waterlogged Eden Park. And so as we sat down, the game started, I was captivated right from the start. Dad said, watch the number 11, it was Brian Williams. He scored a couple of tries in that game, and I looked over at Dad and I quickly said to him, Dad, how do you become an All Black? My dad, he paused, looked over at me, and he said, son, you have to be brainy. And I thought, okay, one, that was the first thing that captured my mind. And it stayed with me for years. The second story that really stuck with me, that impacted me and as a challenge, was what my mother said to me. It was early, I was at high school now. I was preparing to get ready to trial for the Auckland secondary school team. It was my first trial in the Auckland reps. And I went out with that morning, I was in a rush, I grabbed some things, put them in my bag, and off I went to school. At the end of the day, I was picked up by my parents, we shot off to the trials, and I remember as I began to put on my kit, put on my shirt, put on my socks, when I pulled out my shorts, the shorts were my, my sister's pink bloomer shorts. <laughs> and you can imagine, amongst all those rugby guys, the last thing I wanted to do was put on these, pull on these pink bloomer shorts. So I ran and I quickly said to my mum, Mom, I've got these pink, I've got, I've got these shorts here, these are, these are Vasa shorts, and well, I don't want to wear these. And so my mother, she paused, she looked at me and said, son, put them on and wear them. And I said, what, mom? She said, because you're going to stand out. 
And so what did I do as a good son? I put them on and I wore them. And it worked. I stood out. I made the Auckland Secondary School's rugby team at that time, and it was brilliant. But the thing, the reason why I bring these two stories to you is there's a couple of things that I'm really and I'm challenged by. And the two reasons why is that my father said, Brandy, when I realized about that, in terms of us as a Pacific, that knowledge, education was important to us. We already see the statistics. We've already heard so many of the stories and the challenges that we face as families. So knowledge is important and statistics to know so that we're in, well informed about decisions that we need to make. And my mother said to me, son, you'll stand out. And so in essence, that he was saying, she was saying to me that influence is important. Influence is important where you are today, and it's a challenge for us as Pacific as we continue, as we begin to rise up as a community for such a time as this. And I can't help but think about Isaiah 59 says this, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, and it's coming in line waves and waves, that the Lord will rise up a standard against it. And we are that standard. And I challenge and I, I, I commit and I, 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 our Pacific um, here, even as Pacific Wave starts, that we part, be part of that standard, that we join with Family First, that we join with Pacific Waves to be that standard and to be that, that, that light and that beacon for our people today. So, Marlo love of Thanks, Thank you, Thank you Savia. Team, two minute story. It starts with Bob giving me a call in February, basically saying, Nick, I went to a conference, I heard that Pacific could play a crucial part in anchoring the government from taking us onto the rocks. That conversation resulted in me standing here today. He shared his view with a funder who says, yep, we'll pay Nick's salary, get him on board. And I really appreciate that 1.5 million that was donated for my salary. <laughs> That's awesome. But long story short, I want to acknowledge the fact that we held a whanau. Alfred Ngaro gave us an opportunity to jump on board and we did a whanau, a meeting about euthanasia in the Mangere Art Centre. And at that meeting, some of our Pacific people came. At the end of that particular meeting, I made an appeal to those Pacific saying, come on guys, we need to do something here. It's our turn to get up and help paddle in the waka. Some of those older people came to me after saying, we're here to paddle. I was looking, thinking, uh, is there anybody younger, fitter, faster? Um, you know, but here's the thing. These particular people have been dynamic. And as a result of their hard work, we've given them a name, and we just created this name, Bob and I, Pacific Wave. I'm not going to get them up right now because we haven't got enough time. But you will see what Pacific Wave will do with your support and with you guys cheering us on on the sideline. We will wake our Pacific nations. We will make sure that they understand the concept, and it's not their fault that they've fallen into this rut where all they're doing right now is paying their bills and feeding their kids. If we can just get them to look away for a second and have a look at some of the things that we've heard about today, you will find them get on their war paint. They'll get on their war chants, and they will come and they will fight. As my good friend Alfred said once, bro, we may come to the party late, but we bring the life of the party. Pacific, rise up, watch this space.